Now with some muddy fine grilled cheese. <laughs> and now I'm back. So, what are we talking about today? We're talking about relationships. Straight up dating advice from Caleb the Video Maker 2. Here it is. Good luck. That's all I got. Psych guys, you know what I'm talking about. Database design relationships. Oh man, that joke never gets old. <laughs> so we are going to be talking about one, two, one relationships. Now there are three types of relationships. One to one, one to many, and many to many. And we are going to dissect all of these in the upcoming videos. And each one has a certain way you're supposed to design it. Therefore, I think it's appropriate to separate them out into their own videos, so that way I'm not overwhelming you. <laughs> I thought I could discuss all of this in one video one time, and the video was 30 minutes long, so I decided it's probably good to, you know, break things up a little bit. <laughs> so let's go through an example of a user and a username. And just to follow the whole theme of relationships, let's go for an animal dating site. No kidding, I thought of the most ridiculous example and I planned a whole series around it. And then I looked it up and these things actually exist. <laughs> this might actually be practical for something. <laughs> Anyways, this website, animals can go on and obviously they might need some help from their owners, but they can create an account, they'll have a username, and they can date other animals. <laughs> so a user has a one-to-one -one relationship with a username. Now this is talking about database design relationships. So <laughs> The username is exclusive to the user, meaning that if your username is uh, sexychick123, get it because it's, it's an animal dating site, <laughs> chick, and then this, <laughs> I can't draw a chicken, this <laughs> is the chicken that this username is referring to. There is a level of exclusivity here in that this chick doesn't have two usernames, and this username does not have two chicks that it's describing. Now, let's compare a one-to-one -one relationship with a one-to-many relationship. In this, we're going to need a new design. So we are going to start with a, a blogging website. So let's say this dating website also has blogs, right? And you can, you can post your blogs on there. Now this blog post posts the author's name up here. So this chick, <laughs> This is the most ridiculous example ever. This chick can write multiple blogs, but in this situation, each blog can only be written by one individual. In that situation, this would be a one-to-many. We will discuss one-to-many's in more detail in the upcoming video, but essentially, there is only one side that has exclusivity, meaning that this blog is exclusively authored by one person, animal, individual, entity, whatever. This one too, it just happens to be the same uh, animal, but it could have been a different one. It has one author. Now until the next video, let's disregard one-to-many relationships and let's focus on how to design one-to-one -one relationships in a database. One-to-one -one relationships are the easiest ones to design. That's because you only need one table to do it. This brings us back to the terms entity and attribute. In this situation, the entity is the user and the attribute is the username. So we can just have a user table and one of the columns could be the username. Now this forces every user to only have one username. That's because when we enter a new user, we'll put a row, we'll give it one username and then the next user is going to have one username and there's no more columns for another username. So a one-to-one -one relationship, you can just think of it as an attribute describing an entity, and you can store the attribute as a column within a table that describes the entity. So for this situation, we would have sexy chick one, two, three. And then all the other data about sexy chick one, two, three can go over here. And a new user would be a new row with only one username. Now there is one other way you can store a one-to-one -one relationship if you want, and that's to break something off into a new table. So an example for this might be an image. Let's say a user can have one image and that image is used for their profile. This image 
could be placed into a new table called images. And what this will do, it will separate the images from the user just a little bit. And then this images table is going to have a foreign key that points back to the user. What's the benefit in this? Well, it actually just allows some separation. You might not want all of the images in the user table just because you don't think it's relevant or you don't want it stored there or you're just trying to make things faster, anything like that. Now, you only need to use the images table when you need an image, not all of the time. If you store the image inside of the users table, like right here, that data is going to always be inside of that users table, regardless of whether you want to use the image or not. And that's just an example. Either way would work. You could put it in the table. You could make a new table for it. It all depends. If you really want a table separate for images, that would work fine. The only thing to remember here is that in order for this to be a one-to-one -one relationship, there only needs to be one image per user. That means if you have a foreign key, every single row would have to be unique. So you'd have like six, eight, nine, and then if you gave the value six, that would be two images pointing to the same user. This would no longer be a one-to-one -one relationship. So to enforce that, you need to use a unique constraint, and we will talk about that in an upcoming video. But as for that, that's all I got for one-to-one -one relationships. Hopefully that was helpful. As always, please click subscribe, support this channel, and I will see you in the next video.